Good morning, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. It's day three of morning tea with Miss Lucas. Today, I've got my little Westy mug. He's so cute. This is the kind of dog that I had growing up. We actually have this is a Westie hanging on our wall. And we also have this pillow. And Kiana and I don't have a dog like this, but this pillow and that painting and this mug were all a gift from my parents. So we've kind of inherited the Westie obsession. I hope if we ever get a dog that we'll get a little Westie because they're so cute. Um, and the kind of tea that I have today, the formal name is Dreamy Creamy Galway Tea. And this is tea that Kian and I got when we were in Ireland. Not last summer, but the summer before that. Yes, in Galway, which is an adorable little seaside town on the western coast of Ireland. And this tea is interesting because it's got, it's mostly a black tea, so it does have caffeine. But it also has coffee beans in it and jasmine flowers, which is an interesting contrast because coffee beans, if you drink coffee, you know, it's pretty bitter. And jasmine, if you've ever had jasmine tea, jasmine is a flower and it's very floral and kind of sweet. So it's an interesting combination of flavors, but I really like it. We got it at this little cafe and to order as a drink and then we decided to buy some of the tea to bring home. And it's a loose leaf tea, so you can kind of hear it shake around in there. It's not the typical little um, bags of tea that you buy at the store um, more commonly. And so we've got this little strainer, and I just put the amount of tea that I want inside. And then it just sits and soaks like a normal tea bag. And then you can clean it out. So. What I wanted to talk to you guys about today, this video is going to be much shorter because I can't believe day two was 25 minutes long. I wasn't paying attention at all, obviously. So what I want to do today is just share with you a craft that I did yesterday, and it's not very creative or fun, but it is useful. And then read a poem. So that's all. Alright, so what I did yesterday is I've had a few buttons that fell off pieces of clothing and I did not bother to replace them. Or if I did, I just secretly safety pinned the button on there so that it would still work. Um, some of you might, I don't know if you guys remember my outfits, but I wore this dress to school once kind of recently. It was $9 at TJ Maxx. It was an amazing deal. Um, and one of these buttons, this one right here, had fallen off. And what I had done is I had safety pinned it to the inside, but that wasn't really a good long-term solution especially with washing it and everything, um, the safety pin might have gotten messed up. So I'm going to unbutton a couple of these here. And you can see that the color used to sew with the thread here is the same as the fabric and buttons. And this one has maroon thread, if you can kind of see that. And so I actually sewed this with um, <clears throat> one of my friends. She's very textile savvy. She majored in it and has had, she used to have a clothing company and now she works sewing, um, her job is to sew and fix dresses, and um, she just loves the fabrics. And so she helped me learn how to do this. If you have any buttons that you need, I mean, you could look, you would never tell, especially the fact that the, the color on this one is maroon with a thread. You can't tell once it's buttoned up, so it doesn't matter. And all I needed to do this was a little needle, which you probably have one lying around at home, and if you don't, they're like a dollar at a craft store. Or imagine you could order a set online at Amazon or something like that, and just little pieces of thread and some scissors. And it took me like five minutes to do that. And then this one is a shirt that I wore kind of recently at school. Same thing. I actually bought this shirt from Goodwill for a few dollars, and this button was completely missing. And when I was checking out, I tried to ask them for more of a discount, and they said it's prices marked. So I had to pay the two whole dollars for this shirt. But I liked it because the material is really soft and I like to wear it with leggings or just when I want to wear something comfortable. Although I know it is probably like an old man shirt so it's kind of weird. But there was actually a little spare button hidden on the inside. A lot of clothes have this. It was by the tag here and you can see that dark color thread is where the button had been sewn in on the inside. It's a spare. And that was what I used to replace this one in the middle. So again you can see 
the thread color is more of like a dark green gray on this one is that same maroon thread that I had but it kind of blends in you can't really tell from far away that it's a different color and again just took a few minutes and I can show you the inside this is the first one that I did because I care about this shirt less than my nine dollar dress and the one that I'm going to show you next but this is it's kind of like a big knot on the inside but it doesn't really matter because no one's going to see that so that was that one feeling very productive during this pandemic and then this last one, you guys might remember this coat I've worn at school before. Ella Bean, it's got this wool liner, very cozy and warm during these cold winter days that we had had. And I had a problem because this lower button had fallen off. And what had actually happened when the button came off is it tore the fabric that was underneath the button. So. My friend, I mean, I do know how to do this. It's called darning, and that's more advanced than just sewing a button on. Um, my friend had taught a class on it a couple years ago, so I took that class, and I know how to darn things, but since she, again, studied textiles as an expert, she actually did that for me. So you basically weave thread and needle around the hole to create a new patch of fabric. Um, and then sewing a coat button is different than other buttons because you can see it's kind of like high off of the coat fabric. There's this distance so the button wobbles a lot and that makes it seem unsturdy but the purpose is that when you actually button it up together the coat is thick so that it needs room underneath the button to sit comfortably on top of the other side of the like the button um, the part that you button onto the button I guess. So anyways my friend helped me she darned this little hole for me and so she fixed the hole and then she um, helped me tie this new knot and you have to wrap the thread around and around and around underneath the button to keep it sturdy like that. And it was um, in a crisscross pattern on top, which doesn't really matter, but it just, she was just like, well, we can make it match the other buttons, which also have it sewn diagonally across the four holes instead of um, parallel. So that's fixed now, and obviously I won't be wearing this for a while, especially since today is like 78 degrees out. <clears throat> it's really warming up, we're getting that nice spring weather. I think this is the best time in Roanoke because there's no bugs, and there's no humidity. And it's like the perfect weather to open your window and sleep at night with that nice cool spring air coming in. So that was my craft that I did yesterday that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you guys all are getting the chance to go outside. I've been walking on the Greenway pretty much every day, and it's been glorious. The blooms are out on the trees, daffodils have popped, it's just a beautiful time of year even though there's so much craziness going on in the world. Today I'm going to try and watch the news less because I watched it a lot yesterday and I think it's just kind of stressful and too much screen time. So the last thing I want to share with you. Again, trying to keep this quick. Oh my god, we're already at eight minutes. How? Sorry, guys. Um, is a poem from this book called Calendars by Annie Finch. And she's a poet from Maine. And I got this book at a little weird, crafty art store that was near where Keon and I used to live in Boston. And I got really excited when I saw that she was from Maine because I have some Maine poem anthologies which has a lot of poems by a lot of different authors put together, but I don't have a lot of books just by one author. And this poem is called Butterfly Lullaby, and it's pretty short. I just think about the word lullaby as I read it. My wild indigo dusky wing, my mottled broad wing skipper, a sleepy dreamy dusty wing flying through my night. My northern southern cloudy wing, my spring azure, my crescent pearl, a silver spotted sweet question mark sleeping in my sky. A tiger swallowtail harvester moving through my hours, an eyed brown in the red winged dark rapping softly in my words. So it's not very long. What I like about this poem is the subtle rhyming that she uses, dusky wing, dusty wing, um, a lot of alliterations, silver spotted sweet question mark sleeping in my sky, a lot of S's, um, 
with my AP kids, we talked about euphonious words, which sounds smooth and soft to the ear. And the S consonant is very soothing. And so when you think about the word lullaby, something that's relaxing, something that prepares you for sleep or a period of rest, um, I think a lot of the alliteration and the rhyming that she has has those euphonious words that are relaxing to the ear and kind of soft. You know, a butterfly is something that's very delicate, something that's very gentle and beautiful, harmless. Just all it really does is bring, I mean, it does it pollinate things? It drinks nectar. I'm sure it has many uses in the biological world. I wish I knew more about that now that I'm saying this, but it obviously also brings us a lot of beauty just to see them. I mean, we have Sally, our butterfly in my room. Rest in peace. She's had a rough time of it. Her One of her wings is pinned next to her. Um, kind of had a similar fate to Harold. But there's going to be dangers of being in the classroom when you're a, a cool bug that people want to check out. All right, that was my poem, that was my tea, that was my random little craft part of my life I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I hope you guys are finding new things to do, new ways to stay entertained. Again, go outside, it's so beautiful today. Do it for me, just connect with nature and have that peaceful time, enjoy the beauty. Whether it's alone or with a friend, it will bring you a lot of relaxation and, and peace, I believe. All right, I love you guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.